Hey there, everybody. Um, this is what we've talked about so far. Um, uh, we've, talking about, we've talked about forces uh, and that they are interactions between objects and them. And we've also talked about Newton's three laws. What I'd like to show you now is how to draw a three-body diagram. And this is a diagram that shows all the forces acting on an object. And then I want to show, uh, tell you all the different types of forces that you're going to see on a free body diagram uh, of objects. Uh, so we're going to let's talk about. Uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's talk about free. Free body diagrams. Now, those of you who are interested in someday going on and studying engineering, pay attention. Okay, being able to draw free body diagrams, I mean, it's so important. It's this is like vocational training right now. Okay, so so pay close attention. Now, before we draw a free body diagram, the first thing I want to do is draw an interaction diagram. An interaction diagram is a diagram that shows all the forces acting on an object. So here's my little block of wood, okay, and I'm just going to draw a little diagram of it just sitting on a table, just at rest sitting on a table, just like it is right here. But let's do it as a diagram. Um, here's our table. Okay, and here's the earth below the table. So this is earth, and this is the table, and then here's our little block of wood, and I'll just call it a block. Now, all of these objects are applying forces to each other. Okay, so this is a solid surface, and this is a solid surface. They're all applying forces to each other, and what we want to do is sh show all of those forces. So, obviously, the earth is pulling down on the block. So I'm going to show it like this. This is the force of the block of the earth force of the earth on the block. Okay. So the this is these are subscripts now. Uh, we use a capital F to stand for force and this is the agent that's acting on the block. The the earth is pulling on the block, pulling down on it with the force of gravity. So this is um, the agent and this is the object that's getting pulled on. Now to keep the block from falling down, we're going to do this, we're going to draw the, oh, before we get to this, this is the force of the earth on the block. Now here's one thing you might not know, the block pulls up on the earth. This is the force of the block on the earth. You mean the block pulls up on the earth? Yes. Remember Newton's third law. For every force on one object, the block, there's an equal and opposite force on another object, the earth. The block, the, this little wooden block right here, this little wooden block in my hands right now is pulling up on the earth. Of course, we don't feel the earth falling up towards the block because the earth is so huge. It has so much inertia compared to this block. We really don't notice it, but it is there. Okay, um, And this is really Newton's third law right here. The force of the earth on the block, the force of the block on the earth. And this, this is the interaction between the earth and the block. Now, the table pushes up on the block. So this is the force of the table on the block, right? Right here? Okay, but for every force on one object, there's a force on, on the other objects. And so, obviously, you know, the, the block is pushing down on the table. So this is the force of the block on the table. Okay, now this is what we call an interaction diagram. It shows all the forces, all the interacting forces uh, that are involved. Um, I could draw, you know, obviously the earth is pulling down on the table, the table is pulling up on the earth. I'm going to ignore that for right now because I want to focus on the block. Uh, uh, and I, I could also add forces to this. I could, I could push the block with my hand and then there can be friction opposing that force and so on, but let's just keep it simple for right now. So I've got um, four forces on here, an interaction between the table and the block and between the earth and the block. Well now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this diagram, this interaction diagram, which is actually pretty messy, 
and I'm going to simplify it and I'm going to draw what's called a free body diagram. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an object of study. What object am I concerned about? Well, let's be concerned about the block. So what you do is we're going to make the block our system. And okay, now what do we mean by a system? A system is just an object or a series of objects that I'm going to look at and I'm going to isolate it. Uh, and I'm going to draw a boundary around it and I'm going to say, hey, you know, this is my system. So let's draw, you know, here's my block and I'm going to draw just my block. And then I'm going to draw the forces that are acting on the block. Not the forces that the, that the block applies to other things, but what those things, what those agents apply to the block. So here we have the force of the earth on the block and then we have the force of the table on the block. And this right here, this right here is a free body diagram of, of the block. And it is uh, being able to look at an interaction diagram or just any situation or problem that you have and to be able to correctly draw a free body diagram is really a, an important skill to have. It's uh, very powerful. So here's my free body diagram. Now why do they call it a free body diagram? Well, this is my free body. I've, I've kind of taken the, my system and I, and I only draw it. I free the drawing of other things. I only draw the object of interest. And then I draw the forces by outside agents. And here the agents are the earth and the table, these outside things that are applying forces to my object. There's my free body diagram of the, of the uh, wooden block. Okay, And that's what a free body diagram is. Now, the book takes it one more step further. It says, let's treat the block with, with what we call the particle model. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat this block as if it has no extent to it. It just, maybe it has mass, but it and I'm just going to treat it like a, a point in space or a dot. And I'm going to draw the forces. This is the force of the table on the block. And this is the force of the earth on the block. OK. And of course, there, there are the interaction forces. The table on the block is interaction force of the block on the table. But I'm not drawing a free body diagram of the table. So I don't show that force. I'm not drawing a free body diagram of the earth. So I don't show the, the force of the block on the earth. These are the forces that I show to draw a free body diagram. Now, what kind of forces do I draw on a free body diagram? Well, there are many different kinds of forces, and they are listed in your textbook. Um, and these are the forces we're going to use in this class. They're on, uh, listed on table 6.2. So if you have your book with you today, go to table 6-2, and it's on page 123 of your book. And, um, but if you don't have your book, just pay attention, write this down. And we have, have different kinds of forces. Well, we have what we call the force of friction. We have friction forces, right? What is friction? Friction is a force uh, between two surfaces that is parallel to the surface. Here, here I've got the surface. Let me zoom way out here as far as I can. So here I've got uh, my hand in, in, my, in this block. And I put these two forces together. And okay, put these two forces together. And, uh, they're, and they're, they're pressed together. But the force of friction is the force that's parallel to the surface. It's like what you get when they rub together like this. OK, that's friction. And um, so friction uh, is always parallel to the surface. OK, and then we have what we call normal forces. F sub n is a normal force. OK, now this one is hard for students to get. Friction is part of everyday life. What's a normal force? Well, the normal force is kind of like friction. Friction is the interaction between two surfaces, but, th but friction is the force that's parallel to the surface. The normal force is the force between two surfaces that's perpendicular to the surface. That's, you know, here these surfaces are pressed together, okay? 
And so if I take my two hands and press them together, the normal force is it's perpendicular to the two surfaces. So um, if I have, uh, in this case, if you look at this block, okay, the force of the table on the block is the normal force. It's the, the force of the, between these two surfaces that's perpendicular to the surface. And that's called a normal force. And the reason it's called a normal force is that in mathematics, the word normal means perpendicular. So we call it the, the perpendicular force. Um, we have F sub SP. We're going to study springs. So springs can apply forces to objects. We'll talk more about that later. Oh, we have uh, ropes and chains um, or strings. F sub T, that's a tension force. And that's uh, when you have a string or a cable. Uh, and here, here I've got a, a cable, you know, like this. And when I pull on something, that's a tension force. Okay, that's a tension force. And um, tension forces have, have kind of some interesting properties. The direction of the force is always the same as the direction of the of, of the actual string or cable that you're using. And it, it always pulls. You, you can't push. Look, if I try to push, it just kind of goes slack, right? But it, the direction of the force is always a pulling force. So tension forces are the force from strings or ropes or chains, and they always pull. They don't push. Okay. Then we have um, F sub TH. This is a thrusting force. And this is the force of a rocket or a jet engine. When you take a lot of mass uh, that's really hot and you throw it out the back end of a jet engine, um, we call that thrust. And finally, um, we have this thing, uh, F sub G. It's a force, and that is the force of gravity, or also known as weight. Weight, what is your weight? Your weight is the force of all, all the massive objects on Earth pulling you down. Okay, and we call that weight, and it is a force. So these are all the forces that are going to be on your free body diagram uh, that we're going to add. So what you have to do is you have to practice uh, um, drawing these free body diagrams a lot. And that's what you're going to do uh, on, the, on the homework. What you're going to do uh, for these practice problems uh, in your book right here, uh, this practice problems 3 through 11. Um, they're going to ask you to draw uh, diagrams, motion diagrams and free body diagrams uh, um, given uh, for these different given situations. So, um, you know, read the book very carefully uh, as well as, you know, hopefully you took good notes and uh, do your best uh, on, uh, on assignment uh, number one for unit four. That's it. Have a great day and a great weekend. Bye-bye.